Welcome everybody to One Down Dog On Demand. My name is Nikki Sakariccia and this is a basics level class. Um, it's 30 minutes, it goes by quickly, so we'll jump right in. You will want two yoga blocks if you have them and a place to practice. Um, it's also best if you do this work in bare feet if you can, especially because in class today we're focusing on the foundations of yoga alignment, which always starts with whatever's touching the ground, in this case, our feet. Right, so if you'd like to listen to music while we practice, I've hand-selected a playlist for you, and we'll start it on the count of three. Uh, you could also check the link in the description below if you don't have access to it yet. All right, so on the count of three. One, two, three. So we're starting standing. You'll want your blocks within arm's reach, and you can stand right in the middle of your mat like I am with your feet looking parallel. All right, so let me give you some physical landmarks to help orient you to this very basic alignment that you'll see in a lot of yoga poses going forward. If you look at your toes, you want your second toes to be parallel to each other, right? In this piece, sorry, that was very loud in my ear. So you want your second toes to be parallel because for a lot of us, our big toes aren't parallel, All right? So if you look at your second toes, they're pointing straight forward. And then check to see if your knees are also looking straight forward. Kind of like the big toes, some of us have knees that knock in, some of us have knees that bow out. So you might have to work a little bit here to bring your knees parallel and to keep your second toes parallel. Right now, if you're standing here and you're like, whoa, I've never had to think this much about my stance before, welcome to yoga. <laughs> All right, so let me ground this in for you. Keep the second toes parallel, knees parallel as best as you can, maybe with effort if this alignment isn't your default yet, but not with strain, not with force, right? And if you can do this part, you're already in the more advanced styles of yoga, which is not just about physical alignment and strength and flexibility, it's really about the mindset you keep as you're going through the practices, All right? Now, one of the benefits of doing yoga this way is that you don't have a bunch of people around you in front of you, like if you're in the studio, having this conscious or even unconscious peer pressure, right? All you have as a point of reference is me as your guide and your body, right? Now, bring your hands here to the frontal hip bones, right? This is different than your outer hips. Right? And if you're not familiar with this physical landmark, poke around, get familiar with yourself. All right, there are two bony junctures that kind of come down like a V. And you also want these bones, like the knees and the second toes, pointing straight forward, right? As opposed to like this, where the hips are kind of going that way, right? And the feet are going in opposite directions. All right. In yoga, we call this a parallel base. And it sets the foundation for the very first pose of yoga, which is called mountain or tadasana, right? So please stand in mountain pose. Let the arms drop by your sides. Do your best to keep your chest lifted. Feel free to close your eyes or gently rest your gaze out on the floor way in front of you just so you're not dropping your head down. And just let this alignment sort of soak in. Now, when I was a beginner, I would remember standing in mountain pose and thinking, I need to be doing something. <laughs> I'm very type A. I'm used to being productive and just standing still felt wrong. So I can appreciate if you're experiencing that internally. But try to just remain still. Steady is really what we're going for, right? Embodying this quality of the mountain, You might feel this little kind of, I don't know, bubbling up impulse to like let the alignment go, which is where the discipline of focus comes in, right? So I'm going to keep you here for another moment. Take a big breath in. Let it out through the mouth. Right, so this is the foundational alignment that we're going to play with for the next little bit. Turn towards the front of your mats, the short edge. Grab your blocks. They have three settings. 
Uh, so the joke we say sometimes is that the flat setting is Los Angeles, the middle setting is Chicago, and the tall setting is New York. So pick your city. I'd say if you're really, r truly new, if you're really tight, if you've heard yourself say, I can't do yoga, I'm too inflexible, go to New York right away. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna set your hands on the blocks. Check out your feet, because you can see them. All right, second toes pointing straight ahead, knees are pointing straight ahead. It's always easier to tell that if your knees are a little bent, because the kneecaps are this nice landmark, right, to give the knees direction. All right, so now you're in this shape called half forward fold pose. From the side, you could tell my spine looks flat, right? My back is basically parallel to the ceiling. And my knees are deliberately bent, even though I can straighten my legs, right? If you straighten your legs and you feel the spine round, that's not going to help you in the long run. So bend the knees, pull your chest away from the belly and the belly away from the thighs. Even if you have a bit of belly here, there's a sense of your spine pulling you forward, which is what we're trying to connect to, the strength of the body. Right, from half forward fold pose, bring your blocks right in line with your feet. All right, now as you exhale, step your right foot back. Try to make that a long step. Right? If you're really stiff, tired, tight, that could be two steps. Right? Now you're on the ball of your back foot. Before you look at it, sort of like checking your homework answers in grade school, just sense it from the inside. We call that proprioception or body awareness, and it's something we cultivate during these practices. Right? Can you sense that the ball of your foot is on the floor, your toes are on the floor, and your pinky toe is pointing straight forward. All right, now take a look, see if that's actually what's happening. You might be more here, right, where your toes turned out. So it's an easy fix, it's not wrong, it's not a mistake, it's part of practicing, right, of learning these little refinements. All right, now you're gonna lower the back knee, and then keep your pinky toe turned forward, not out, right, straight ahead. Front knee hasn't changed, Second toe pointing straight forward, All right? Walk your hands to your front thigh, All right? Approaching low lunge pose, Anjaneyasana. Right now, you don't need to know the names of yoga poses. Sort of like being around a second language, eventually you'll just learn the words, All right? So for now, just focus on what the body is doing. All right, take your arms straight up. And notice that my arms are not literally straight up, right? This allows the shoulders to drop away from the neck. So we're not cultivating tension where we don't want it, right? You want your legs to work, right? Maybe your hips are working here, but you don't need the shoulders to work. Take two big breaths. Breathing out, hands to your blocks. Back knee lifts, breathe in for runner's lunge. As you exhale, two short steps or one long step forward. Landing between your blocks. Your two feet are hip bone distance apart, not outer hip. Knees, second toes, pointing straight ahead. All right, so we're back where we started. Parallel base, full breath in. Breathing out, side two, left foot steps back, could be two shorter steps. All right, and then lower the knee. Don't look at it yet. How's your back foot? Get a sense of where it is. You want your pinky toe pointing straight ahead. All right, once it looks good, feels good, ground your front heel, hands to your front thigh. All right, now you might be a little wobbly, right? Sort of like Bambi legs, right? When you're new, your body's working a lot harder than it needs to because you're on the learning curve, so... It's cool, just breathe. All right, when you're ready, arms reach up. Right, awareness without discipline can be a double-edged sword, right? You could notice like, oh God, my legs are so wobbly, I'm already tired, I suck. Right? That's one way to use your awareness. The other way is to notice the wobble 
right? And then strategically do something about it, which is more of the yogic way. Breathing out, hands to your blocks. Back knee up, breathe in, runner's lunge. Exhale, step forward, half forward fold pose, right? Now you could be on fingertips, right? Flat looking back. Bend your knees, bring weight to your heels, and stand up. Find your way back to mountain pose. Notice if the legs want to lock. Okay. Little bend to the knees. Knees are parallel, second toes straight ahead. Okay. Let's try a slightly different posture. Breathing in. Get a little taller mountain pose. As you exhale, fold forward, hands to your blocks. Step your right foot back. Keep the back knee lifted this time and push through your back heel. Right, so the pinky toe is pointing straight ahead. Second toes still look parallel. Bend into the front knee. Walk your hands to your front thigh. Right, feel the fire of your legs turned on. Right now, even if you're looking at me and you're like, well, she's not wobbling. <laughs> I am, right? But it's subtle, right? It's sort of like a toddler learning how to walk versus an adult, right? We're all falling from one foot to the other when we're walking. But as we get more sophisticated and more practiced, right, those big wobbles become super subtle. So that's all you're looking for here is just incremental progress. Arms come up. Right? Even though you're looking forward, keep aware of your back foot. It's going to want to tilt at first. As you exhale, hands find your blocks. Two short or one long step forward. Right? When you step, you step strategically, right? Second toes parallel. Let's try that on the other side. Breathing in half forward fold. As you exhale, left foot strides back. Think about where you're landing, right? So when you land, you're in alignment. Hands come to your front thigh. Dig into your front heel, right? That's gonna help reduce the wobble, right? Once you're less of a beginner, <laughs> right? You can control your energy exertion. You'll be able to breathe really calmly and that will also help reduce the wobble, right? See if you can bend into the front knee so the knee is right above the heel, right? Or progressing there. Arms come up. This one's called crescent lunge pose. You can imagine you're holding a big crescent moon between your hands. One more breath. Exhaling hands to your blocks. Two short or one long step. Land, hips distance, second toes parallel to each other. Right, wait to your heels, stand in mountain pose. Take a big breath. Out through the mouth. All right, close your eyes for a moment. Feel your feet. Need the foundation of the physical body our connection to the earth. <laughs> We're going to mess with that relationship a little bit. Take a block <clears throat> between your calves. So just on the skinny setting. Right? Squeeze in. That's going to firm up your alignment. Right? Now, in this next one, it's called palm tree pose. It's meant to mess with your balance. Right? So you might get some of this, like, movement in your hips, try to minimize that, right? Squeeze to the block, feel your feet without looking, look forward instead, right? And as you inhale, bring your weight towards your toes, right? And then press into your toes to lift your heels. Squeeze into the block, Right? Remember that muscles are like little engines of action, so they're going to generate right, energy, combustion. Right? So if you fall out, cool, 
That's why we call this a practice and not a performance, right? You're not here to perform this discipline. You're here to practice it and cultivate the mindset that it requires of us. Press through the toes. All right, try it one more time. Squeeze in, lean forward, big breath. All right, now once you're up and you can kind of stay there, take the hands together in front of your chest. If you want more of a challenge, arms come up. Try not to move your eyes. Believe it or not, your eyes are helping you balance maybe more than your feet are right now. As you exhale, wait to your heels, arms come down. Woo! All right, release your block. All right, we're going to do one more like that, but the feet are going to stay on the floor for this one. So block goes between the upper inner thighs. Don't be shy about this. There's lots of muscle up here, whether you believe it or not. Second toes parallel, knees parallel, hip bones parallel. All right, squeeze in. All right, now when you exhale, it's like you're sitting into a very low bench behind you. It's called chair pose, right? You want to shift your weight to your heels. Deepen the crease at your hips. Squeeze to your block. Just come down a little bit, all right? Sometimes chair pose is called lightning bolt pose because from the side, you know, it's like a, I don't know, like a kid's drawing of a lightning bolt, sort of a zigzaggy, right? So you want to keep that zigzag deep at the hip crease. And then if you peek down at your knees, they should still be parallel and your second toe should still be parallel. But if they're not, you got to make adjustments. Right, hips back, arms forward. Don't hold your breath, it makes it a lot harder. Right, chair pose obviously helps to build strength in the thighs, control over the flexibility in the lower back, stamina, endurance, yogic mindset. Breathing in, stand up. Feel your feet. Right, one more, not so long of a hold as you exhale. Weight to your heels, push your hips back. Keep the knees tracking parallel. Keep the feet pressed to the floor. Arms reach forward. Arms lift up a little. Make sure the shoulders don't contract. Right, if they do, just keep the arms down for now. All right, we're focusing on the legs. Sink back. It's like someone's playing a mean trick on you and they're pulling the bench out from underneath your butt. <laughs> Squeeze in, inhale, stand. All right, release your block. All right, maybe you keep it on New York, maybe you can click it down, hands on top. As you exhale, right foot strides way back. All right, turn your heel in, so when you look at your foot, your toes are turned out to the side. Right? You might watch me for this one. Take your blocks with you. Turn your arms and your front foot 90 degrees to the right. So now you've got hands on blocks under your shoulders. Ten toes are pointing to the long side of your yoga mat. Legs are straight-ish. Right? As you inhale, lift your chest. If you tend to carry a lot of tension in your outer hips, you could play with turning your heels out a little just to help open that area. All right. So in a pretty typical yoga class, you would do down dog many times. It's a very popular pose. But it's not actually a basics posture. It's actually an intermediate arm balance inversion. <laughs> Right, so we're gonna do a variation of down dog called wide-legged down dog. Right, you're gonna move your blocks to the side, keep your feet where they are, and walk your hands forward on the ground, don't worry about it, right, until you feel your heels start to peel off the ground. Right, now press the palms firmly to the floor and then lift your hips up and backwards towards the top of the ceiling behind you until your heels sink a little bit.
right? Unless you turned your heels out, check in. Are your second toes still parallel? Take a look, right? That foundational alignment carries all the way through many, many yoga poses. Don't freak out internally. Find your breath. All right, walk your hands back, find your blocks. We're gonna make that dynamic transition one more time. So you're gonna turn your front foot to the original front of your yoga mat. Bring your blocks to the front, bend your front knee. All right, lower your back knee down. All right, now turn your blocks high, even if you don't have to. All right, back foot could be tucked. It could also be pointed. Some people like that because it puts less pressure on the knee. So try it on for size, right? Begin to sink your hips forward just a little, right? You'll notice my thigh bone here is like diagonal as opposed to vertical, right? Front knee straight ahead, second toe straight ahead. Walk hands to front thigh. Begin to push your hands into your thigh to create a little more sensation here. Right? This might be a lot for you in terms of sensation, right? When the sensation gets too high, the breath falls, right? There's no breath support. When we hit this sweet spot of effort, sensation, and breath, that's the yogic state, right? Easeful effort. Feel free to stay here or bring your hands to your blocks. Bring the left hand block to the inside of your foot. Right? Now maybe you play with putting your elbow on your block. Let the hand relax. Right? Could be both elbows for low lizard pose. Right? Be mindful of the hips getting a little too free here. Your front knee and your front arm are buddies. They're hugging one another. Right, next exhale, climb back up. Left hand block goes outside. So you're framing your front foot. Tuck the toes, lift the knee. Maybe one long Gumby step, right? Maybe your legs feel like jelly. Lift up halfway. Right, stride the left foot back. Knee comes down. Up to you whether toes are tucked or pointed. Right, lean the hips forward a little bit more than we did before. If you're here, like your heel isn't like getting to the ground, walk your front foot forward. You could also just help it along. Right, once you're steady enough, take your hands to your front thigh, push down to create traction. Right, now traction is just a fancy word for stretch. <laughs> right, in the body work community, stretch doesn't actually mean much technically, right? But that's what you're feeling for is stretch, right? A sense of pulling or releasing at the front of the left thigh or the crease of the left hip. Right, now you're welcome to stay with that. Again, there might be some wobbling, right? In bare feet, it's like walking into a concert without earplugs, right? Everything is, um, you know, triggering your senses. Bare feet are meant to do that, right? So you might go right hand and block to the inside of the foot, right? In bare feet, you can feel every little shift in body weight and adjustment, which is really healthy. Hey, we're meant to be in bare feet, actually. <laughs> right, so you could stay here, low lizard. You could go elbow, elbow. Try not to let the knee wander. It's usually a sign that you're dropping your effort too much. Right, there has to be this partnership between ease and effort. Right, we don't want the muscles to be so tight they become rigid and cramped. We don't want the muscles to be so relaxed that they can't activate and hold us up. All 
right, check in on the shoulders. Maybe you can roll them back, lift the chest up. Okay, be careful about looking down all the time. All right, so we've got two more breaths here. This one's called low lizard pose. Again, you don't have to remember the names of the poses. The more often you practice, the more fluent you'll be in all of this. Right, climb back up. So we're going to transition differently on this side. Move your blocks out of the way. Carefully step your front foot back. As you come into table, try to align yourself knees, hip bone distance apart, just so that as you're practicing over the you know, coming years, it gets easier to do that. Right Now you're going to come down, cross your legs for a second. Close your eyes. And again, just absorb movement, sensation. Right. Come out of your seat and onto your back. And as you come onto the back, you want your feet and knees hip bone distance apart. So you can set that up before you recline just to, you know, check your work. Make sure it's happening. All right, feel the back connecting to the ground for the first time in this class. Breathe into that support. And then release your legs straight down. Not hips distance, right? It's a lot more comfortable for most of us to just kind of... Let the legs flop, which is something called external rotation, right? Different than the parallel base that we practiced a lot already, right? Now, this next part is super important, maybe the most important part. It's called corpse pose. It's where we start to let go of the alignment. Start to loosen the concentration. Now we're not here for very long, but when we're mindful and we're not distracted, the body-mind system can really shift gears quite easily from action to non-action and from work to rest. So just take a few moments now on your own and just lay here. Now you're, of course, welcome to rest here longer if you want to. Otherwise, start to bend your knees just one at a time. You can rock yourself up to sit if that's all right for your spine, or you could roll to your side, press yourself up. All right, take a comfortable seat. Now all together as you inhale, reach your arms out, up, taking the palms together, maybe not looking, really trusting your body awareness now, taking the hands together in front of the chest in something called the Anjali Mudra, a gesture of gratitude and recognition. Good. Thank you, Yogi, for showing up and practicing some foundational alignment. Hari Om Tatsat, good to see you, and we hope to see you back here on One Down Dog On Demand. Stay well, and see you soon. <laughs>